Hi, it's Slater, aka Science Toy Maker. This video and its linked text page are about making the baby bug foam walk along glider, which can be surfed on a wave of air. The baby bug is a good first glider. It's also very efficient flying for advanced operations like hands only flying. And the waste from cutting out the baby bug can be used to make two more quick and easy gliders. Details for each step are on the companion text page linked below. Reference the numbers in the corner. You'll need a sheet of thin half millimeter EPS foam, which you can make yourself or buy inexpensively. Paper does not work for this design. Print out the simple baby bug pattern. No scaling. Rough cut out the pattern. Save the rest. Find the tiny dotted lines at three corners and cut on them. Cutting close at the corners helps you fit the pattern on the foam. Handle the foam very gently. Put the pattern on the foam so the front tip is right on the edge. The two ends are the same distance from the edges. I'm coloring the tape only so it shows on camera. When all the inside of the pattern is fitted on the foam, tape the ends. Do not fold the tape over to the other side. In the next step, do not cut the tape off. Cut the long, solid black lines in the front and the back lines. Cut the short line in front. Don't throw away the scraps of foam. You can turn them into little gliders, perhaps now as a warm-up. The camber folds in front increase the efficiency of the wing. You'll need to push firmly right at the corner of the book so a crease is clearly visible. Put the foam and the pattern under the cover of a paperback book so the dashed camber lines just barely peek out. Fold it down, pushing firmly at the corner. Do the same to the other side. It doesn't have to be folded very much, but a distinct fold line must be visible on the bottom. You'll adjust the exact angle with a gauge later. To create dihedral, Bend up this time in the middle of the glider on the dashed lines. Be careful because you're touching the foam directly without paper to protect it. Dihedral helps keep the glider stable from tipping. In the back of the glider, the elevons go up. Be careful again here. It doesn't take much to wreck the foam. The elevons stabilize the glider's pitch, keeping it from diving. The elevons will be adjusted later with a gauge. When you're sure you've made all five folds distinctly, carefully cut on the black solid lines at the end, this will release the pattern from the foam. You can reuse the pattern. If your foam glider came with copper wire, cut about 155 millimeters or six inches, bend it in half like a V, cut off a tiny piece of tape and stick it on the angle of the wire. Stick the tape to the top front of the glider. It's best to place it back past the little cut. If your foam did not have wire, cut out this long piece on the pattern page. Tape the wide end with a tiny piece of tape. The angle gauge on your pattern page works for all the folds. Check the front camber and see if it matches the gauge. If not, correct it. But it looks good here. Flatten out the camber just a little on each end of the wing for best stability. Use the same gauge to check the dihedral. The dihedral can be a little flatter than the gauge angle and still be okay. Use the gauge to check the elevons. You can check from the top or the bottom. If you launch your glider now, between thumb and finger, from the back, gently pushing ahead, not pointed up, it might glide perfectly, but more likely it'll stall, dive, or turn instead of going straight. If your glider dives when you launch and the back elevons are the correct angle, it means there's too much weight in the front. I used to cut off weight, but then I discovered I could just bend the weight more backward. If paper's your weight, there's an old trick that allows you to curl paper over an edge. I'm using the back of scissors. Opposite of diving, if your glider stalls, it means you need more weight in front. Again, you can just bend the wire forward 
or straighten part of the paper. This works because of leverage. I'm not adding any more weight to this ruler, but moving the coin outward creates enough leverage to tip it off the table. Adjust the front weight to where there's no stall, or just a little. If it turns every time in the same direction, you can straighten the glide by bending the opposite elevon up just a little. That could make the glider stall again, so you might have to readjust the front weight. There's a separate video just about keeping the gliders up, but here are some basics. As you start flying, you'll need something to deflect the air upward. Cardboard, a pizza box, a cereal box, even a large book. My favorite for a big, lightweight, and durable board is a plastic kind of election sign. Eventually, you might learn to keep it up with only your hands or head, but start out with the board. You might want to take off from the board, tipping as you start walking. Never let the glider get low on the board, and never let the glider get ahead. It should always be on the verge of blowing over the top. Here I'm doing everything wrong. I launch low, the glider gets too far ahead, and it's low on the board. But here I launch high, at eye level, and I never let the glider get ahead of me. It's flying high over the board. Look what happens when I tilt the board back. There's not enough air deflected, so the glider lands. So keep the board more like a wall, not a floor, unless you want to land. You steer the glider by pushing it in the right direction with the board. Following where it goes doesn't work. The air you fly in needs to be very still. If you fly near other people, the glider will be thrown around by turbulent air. Nice recovery. Outside is rarely still enough to fly, unless it's dead calm. Decorating's okay, but save it until after you can fly because if you push down too much on the markers, then you'll crush the foam. If you want to be able to make really tight turns, such as flying inside a house, you might want to add vertical fins to your glider. You can cut a little at the elevon line and fold the end parallel to the edge on both sides. There's also a pattern for the vertical fins as you make the glider. Flying with hands takes a lot of practice. Try different hand positions. The sweet spot is staying exactly under the back edge. It's also possible to fly with one arm. There's a baby bug pattern with a gentler curve that might be more efficient. The trick is to bend hard at the front where it's hard to bend then bend less hard as you work to the other lines, where it's easier to bend. A gauge from the end of the elevon fold to the front helps you get a good airfoil. If you experiment with airfoils, you're into some very advanced aerodynamics. Of course, the most advanced thing you can do is spread the fun. Teach other people how to fly.